Good morning, Algebra 2. Today we are going to talk about nth roots. Um, you're already very familiar of the, with these by using square roots and maybe even cube roots, um, but today we're going to talk about taking them a little bit beyond that. Um, so when you're talking about your nth root, you're going to let n be an integer greater than 1, so you can't have any negative roots here. The b is the nth root of x if and only if b to the nth power gives you x. Such as, if we're talking about squares, we'd say, you know, 4 is a square root of 16 if 4 squared is 16. So the same case when I use cube roots, fourth roots, etc., etc. A uh, special name for cube root, or for roots, if you have n equals 2, that's a square root, you already know that one. And n equals 3, that's a cube root, you may or may not know that one. Anything after that, we don't really give a special name. You just say fourth root, fifth root, sixth root, etc., etc. All right, for these next couple slides with the piano on them, you do not need to write all this stuff down. Uh, just just kind of listen, listen in because we're going to use all this information in the next couple examples. Um, and all of this has to do with tuning any instrument, not necessarily just the piano. Uh, so if you're into music, then you would uh, definitely relate to this example. All right, so the purpose of tuning a piano or other musical instrument is so that the notes it plays have a proper frequencies. It is common to tune the A above middle C to 440 hertz. So if you're familiar with the piano, middle C is literally the, the C that falls in the middle of a piano keyboard. This is not the whole keyboard here. Um, and the letters just repeat themselves. It starts at A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And once it gets back to G, it starts back at A again. So the, they're just different octaves, all right? So the middle C is right here. Um, what they're saying is typically when you have a piano, you tune the A that falls right above middle C to 440 hertz. And hertz is just a measurement of sound here. And then it goes on to say that notes that are one octave apart are tuned so that the note lower in pitch has exactly half the frequency of the note one octave higher. So if we say, all right, one octave lower would put us at this A, meaning that this A needs to have exactly half the hertz that the one above it does, which it does. It would have 220 hertz. So thus, the A below middle C is tuned to a frequency of 220 hertz. In most music today, an octave is divided into 12 steps. You can count the 12 steps of the octave beginning with A below middle C on a piano. So literally, you would have 12 different steps here. You'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then we're back at A again. Notice I use these keys up here because, as you know, these are also notes that are used when playing music. All right. In order so that a piece has the same count sound in any key, notes are tuned so that the ratio of the frequencies of consecutive notes are equal. What that means is the jump from A to A flat is the same as A flat to B, which is the same as B to C, which is the same as C to C flat, etc., etc., or C sharp. That's sharp. Aha. You might have caught me if you're a music player. This would be D flat or C sharp. My apologies. Um, but at any rate, the notes between the jumps, are the, or the frequencies between the jumps and the notes are all going to be the same here. Okay. To find these frequencies, we're going to let F of 0 be the frequency of A below middle C. So we're going to essentially say that this is where our starting point right here. So we're going to call this F of 0, so that's the initial note that we're talking about. And we're starting out at 220 hertz. And we're going to let f of n be the frequency of the note that is n notes above this note. So, for instance, if we wanted to talk about b, that would be f of 2, because you would have 1, 2 jumps to get there. d would be, I think, 5. Let's count here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So d would be f of 5. So, therefore, f of 12 is the frequency of the a above middle c, because you have to go 12 notes to get there. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That makes this f of 12 at 440 hertz. And now we're going to let r be the ratio of the frequencies of consecutive notes. So whatever the jump is, that's going to be r for us. Okay, so that's our ratio. And it's going to be constant the whole way through our octave. Therefore, <coughs> for all integers, n being bigger than 1, of course, we can say, if I take the key that we're working on, f of n, and it could be any of these keys in here, if it could be f of n, 
And we all know that this means f of n minus 1 means uh, the previous key. That's what n minus 1 means. So let's just say, for instance, we're talking about f as our key. Then we would say the previous key before that would be e. So if I take their ratio, f over e here, it's going to give me this number r here. And it would be the same for any of these. I could do the same thing with c and b. I could say, oh, c divided by b is going to give us this ratio r. I could do e and e flat, and that's going to give us r. All right, so any key and the key below it will give us this ratio. So then if we use this equation and we multiply both sides by the equation um, by f of n minus 1, so just getting rid of this essentially, so we're going to multiply here by, whoops, sorry about that, let me get my pen. We're going to basically multiply this by f of n minus 1. And then that means, of course, what we do to the left, we have to do to the right. That's just a period. You can ignore that. So then we have f of n minus 1 over here. What happens is these cancel, and I'm off with just f of n equals r times f of n minus 1. So that's right here. f of n equals r times f of n minus 1. And then, of course, this is all going to work for all integers, n being bigger than 1. And so there you have it. This is our recursive formula for the nth term of a geometric sequence. This was the formula we saw in the last lesson. Now it just happens to also work for when you're tuning a, a keyboard here. All right, so to find this r that we're looking for, this ratio in between all these keys, um, we have to use a, a few values that we already have, have established here. So f of 12 is the 13th term of a musical sequence. The first term is f of 0. That's how we got 13. We had to count 0 as well. From the explicit formula for the nth term of a geometric sequence, we know that f of 12, for instance, uh, is going to be your initial term, which is uh, f of 0, and then times, uh, now 13 minus 1. Now, again, we got this 13 because technically 12 is the 13th term if we start counting at 0, because you have to start at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., etc. So we can simplify this just a little bit right here, and we get f of 12 equals f of 0 times r to the 12th power. Okay. Now we've already established, if you look at our keyboard down here, we already know what f of 0 is. We already said f of 0 is 220 hertz. And we already know what f of 12 is as well. We already said that was 440 hertz. So we're going to use those values to actually find the only thing that would be left, which it would be r here. So it says to find r, we substitute the known values of f of 12 and f of 0. So f of 12 is 440, f of 0 is 220, so we put those in here, right where they belong, so f of 12 goes right in here, f of 0 goes right in here, and then what we want to do is we want to essentially solve for r. So we, you know, divide each side by 220, and we would get 2 on this side, and then of course these would just cancel out, so you would have r to the 12th power equals 2. That is, the ratio of the frequencies of the consecutive keys on a properly tuned piano is the 12th root of 2. So we, we would have to go and we'd have to find that. And you might think, oh, well, that's got to be a really, really tiny number. Um, we're actually going to find that in the next example here. I'm going to go ahead and pause this video and continue this in the next video. Just remember, I know I said didn't, you didn't have to write anything down, but maybe you want to write this down here. 2 equals r to the 12th power because that's what we're going to do to find our, our tuned piano ratio here.